I'm desperate for you. Let's worship. And I I'm desperate for you. I'm desperate for you. I'm desperate for you and I'm a she and and I, and I, I'm desperate for you. I'm desperate for you. I'm desperate for you, Lord. And I. I'm reaching, Lord. I'm reaching for you, Lord. And I, and I, and I, and I, and I, and I, I'm reaching for you. I'm reaching, Lord. I'm reaching, I'm reaching for you, and I'm higher. And I, and I, I'm desperate for you. I'm desperate for you. I'm desperate for you under my higher. Carry under my higher with your hands raised up. And I, and I, and I. For you, my and I, and I, I am desperate for you. I'm desperate for you. Hey, 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 hey. And I, and I, and I, I'm desperate, and I'm I'm desperate for you. I'm desperate, Lord. Listen, the presence of God is your most valuable asset. The presence of God is your most valuable asset. Anything you have and you did not get it from his presence will eventually be nothing. That is one of the most powerful statements you ever hear until Jesus comes. Anything you get outside his presence, you will eventually lose it. Nothing beats God with me. Nothing. Money gotten outside the presence will eventually be lost. The money you get, make sure God is still with you. Whatever you get, if it is a man, make sure that God is also in the equation. Make sure that the two or three people you are gathering with, he is also in the, because there are people who chase God away. Don't be so loyal to a friendship that pushes God away. Uh, I know you call that person Wangu. 
but God, does God call them wangu? You see, there's a company of people, Rumbi, that God says they are mine. Ah, I'm, 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 I'm stuck on that word mine. Mine. Do you belong to God? You see, if, if, if somebody is yours, they obey what you say. You can't say you are God's and you rebel. I was talking to David this morning and I said to him, please listen to this. There are two sacrifices that will change our lives. Now, I, I didn't get an amen because I know you. <laughs> but just for a minute, open your heart. Say two sacrifices. Uh, before the second sacrifice, which is your resources, God prefers the sacrifice of your body. If you cannot sacrifice your body, you see, obviously I'm tired. This one. Uh, if, if you have half a brain, you, the man of God is tired. Even, if, even before you see me, you, you, in your mind you should just think that uh, 10 days revival, apostle justice, um, prayer shifts. In, in South Africa, I was on the pulpit for 10 hours. Yeah, you were not, it was not online, so you, you don't know. Huh? So, me standing here is a sacrifice for God. If you can push your body to do God's work, I will not tear it at when it comes to kingdom issues. That is a sacrifice. Now, if you can Tell your body which wants you to do certain things and you tell your body no. Romans 12. Quick. I beseech you brethren by the message of God. Number one. That you present what? Your bodies as? As a living sacrifice. Do you see? <laughs> when God is telling you not to do certain things, you think you die without them. I didn't get it. Uh, living sacrifice. So you, you sacrifice your body, but you keep living. You stop drinking, but you still keep living. You stop sexting and still keep living. So it's a sacrifice, but it's, you still live. The enemy will convince you you'll die without PM Dawn. I'll die without you. What a lie. Living. Sacrifice. Uh, sacrifice that habit. You still live. May you be a living sacrifice. May you be a living sacrifice. May you put your body on the cross. Ah, Paul said, I die daily. And as I die daily, there's a life. There's a life that comes out of me. In other words, there's a power, a grace that will never come out until you die. What are you refusing to kill? What is it you are refusing to kill? So the first sacrifice, we're talking about the presence. The first sacrifice is your body. I die daily. That is daily. There's some things that your body must sacrifice. So you sacrifice your body by fasting as well fasting is a sacrifice your body says darling zara you tell it no no train your body train it you see i want to eat this when the body ago and i bring my body under subjection find it Lest when I preach unto others, I myself should become disqualified. So your body can disqualify you 
from certain dimensions in God. I pray that in the name of Jesus, anything inside or on your body that is got potential to disqualify you, uh, may you deal with it by the grace. May God grant you grace. May you bring your body under subjection. Raise your hands and begin to pray. Lord, I want to bring my body under subjection. I, I want to bring my body under subjection. I, I don't want to become a, a castaway. I don't want to be disqualified. I don't want to preach the gospel and be disqualified. May my body not fight my breakthroughs. Oh, Jehovah. What a prayer. I bring my body under subjection. Raise your hands high. Say, Lord, the grace to bring my body under subjection. Um, Proverbs 23:26. It says, "My son, give me your heart." Uh -huh. Right. So most of us, it's hard for us to present our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, because we haven't given Him our heart. Because when you give someone your heart, you then don't do things that grieves them. Amen. So if, 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 if I give my heart to Apostle and then I slip around, the two, they don't match. So you need to give God your heart. So your heart is not beating, so it's easy. Amen. So, there's a struggle to sacrifice your body. What is to sacrifice your body? 2 a.m. He says, wake up. But I was praying at midnight. He says, wake up. Okay. If a husband comes home late, let's assume he was out of town so that it's a good reason. <laughs> He comes home late. It's a sacrifice for the wife to wake up and prepare his food. Am I right? She's sacrificing her sleep. She's sacrificing her body because of love. Watch this. Because of love, you will sacrifice your body. He said, ask them, who told you serving me would be convenient? I think five people call it. Who told you that serving God would be convenient? Nothing great was ever birthed out of convenience. I remember years ago, God said to me, can I interrupt your plans? <laughs> and put my plans. Say sacrifice. Say sacrifice. As less of me and all of you. The Lord said all these fire prayers is because there's no presence. Because if you're in the presence, in the presence, part of the presence dimension is fire. It's, it's there anyway. To Chechino Isha Zikanwa. Kana Uchi Kana Armwarwa Urkuda. end up I know to accounts go kuno nenye zvin Ah <laughs> but tsvaka ngwari And kana wamwana wawana zvin God said to me he says I pray for the day that the saints would learn that it is not what is in my hand that is valuable it is what is in my heart. David, a man, not after God's own hand, but after God's own heart. If you have God's heart, his hand is automatic. May you, may, may you experience a, a, a God connection.
connection. This is the difference between Anababa Guti, Baba Manjoro, and this new generation. May we connect to God on an old school level. Undeniable connection with God. Your God connection is the source. Is this your God connection? Your say, Lord, help me to connect with you. Help me to be like David, a man after your own heart. David could not be beaten in war. He never lost a war. David never lost a war because of his God connection. God connection. God connection. God connection. Garamandiri. Di garemauri. Abide in me. A, a permanent presence. Lord, may I have a permanent presence of God. May he not be present on Monday, absent on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Then, uh, I, I, I don't know if you are getting it. Say, I need the presence. Say it again. Say, I need the presence. First Samuel 18, verse 12. We are going into a powerful season. I hope you're ready for it. Now, who, who, at this point, who was king? Saul or David? So, now, the Bible says, Saul, the king, was afraid of David, a teenager. A king feared a teenager. Because, it isn't, the Lord was with him. You see, the two most consistent words used together in the Bible is fear not. Huh? And normally it's fear not because it is I. Fear not, I am with you. Fear not, I will not forsake you. So fear not is based on the presence. As long as he's there, there's no need to fear. Fear not debt because I'm a debt canceling God. Fear not poverty because I am prosperity. Fear not sickness, I am healing. Fear not, fear not. What? Whatever you're afraid of, just get God and the fear goes. Don't be afraid to be poor. God is provision. Are you here? Are you here? Fear not lack. Because silver and gold belong to your father. Now, 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 if you are not in his presence, you don't have access. We need to remove Chikristu Chekudangwana Zinugunangwari. That is prostitution. A prostitute is not interested in relationship. They're not interested in if they offended you or not. It's transactional. Remove transaction. And, um, wages are for workers, rewards are for lovers. Are you a worker of God or are you a lover of God? Wages are for and every worker has a right to there. But rewards are reserved for lovers. Are you praying for things that are for lovers only? Are you offended that God has not given you things that are for lovers only? Say for lovers only. Say for lovers only. Lovers have certain benefits that workers don't have. Say flow. Never forget flow. For lovers only. <laughs> God said to me, there are certain levels of wealth you will never reach until you prove your love for me on that level. I know you love God, but on what level? Because love goes in. You don't, you see, you don't, you, see, you, you have switched off. You want. You don't connect to anybody. You don't connect to anybody. 
You connecting with me, nothing wrong. But ultimately, the end game is you come, I commend you unto God. Say God connection. Say God connection. Say Father, strengthen my God connection. Raise your hands and begin to pray that prayer. Strengthen my connection with you. Strengthen my connection with you. Strengthen my connection with you. Strengthen my connection with you, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. John 8. John 8, verse 29. Are you being blessed? Anyway. He who sent me. This is Jesus Christ. He who sent me. Now, who sent Jesus? God the Father. Okay? Now, the Father sent Jesus. So, Jesus said, I'm not, I'm not here on my own agenda. I got two more. Huh? This one. And he who sent me is with me. Huh? So, when you're in business, is God with you? When you're running ministry, is God with you? Run away, He who sent me is is with me. Right? So, make sure when he sends you that he is with you. Say, Lord, raise your right hand. Say, Lord, send me onto the marketplace, but go with me. Okay? Now, he is with me. Watch this. Then he says the next part. The father has not left me alone. So he can be with you and then leave you. Lift up your right hand. Say father. Whatever would cause you. To leave me. This week. I will drop it. Jesus qualifies the statement. He says, he who sent me is with me. The father has not left me alone. For I always, not sometimes, do those things that please him. So it is the things that don't please God that cause him to leave you alone. May God not leave you alone. May God not leave you alone. May God not leave you alone. How many believe they're destined to be kings here? Raise, wave your hands. So this is for you. David messed up. Right? Like we all mess up. And David knew that when I tell you. Look on losing money. Lose money but keep God. Lose a transaction but don't lose God. Even lose a man but don't lose. Uh, he has not left me alone. But as not David. And the Lord, Psalm 51. And the please, I mean, he was begging. And do not cast me away from your presence. So God can pick you by the collar and throw you out of the presence. You can be in church, but no longer in God's presence. So this week, I want, as you are fasting, to go faster. As you are fasting, I want you to fast. Are you listening to me? And pray about what will cause God to throw you away. According to this scripture, Jehovah is in the business of throwing people away. So when God throws you away, imagine what the devil will do. The devil will, the devil will catch you. <laughs> And do not cast me away from your not away from your church. Away from your presence. And then, and do not take your Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not yours. Do not take your 
Uno kuna kutwara wa Holy Spirit. Uno kuna namba chipari za barua to Holy Spirit. Uno kuna namba ogaroro barua to Holy Spirit. Uno kuna namba room business as what to Holy Spirit. Mwe am train a patient zavone we does not mean how kuna kwa tore wa iwe. God is saying I can take myself away from you. Ndoko na kukutorerwa. Ndoko na kutorerwa ngwari. And and do not take your spirit away from me. The spirit of God can be in in this church but is no longer allowed on you. That's why I can get people people falling under the power experiencing the presence of God. Pango acha vumizwa. There are people who no matter how much you pray for them. Hakuna chino itika. Chichino itika. Chichino mupenyo wako chukuta zengu ya mtu ino kufamba. Iru wendo re introspection. This week you are going to check. The young ones would say you better check yourself before you wreck yourself. Say Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, don't ever leave me. Say, Father God, my prayer today is that you would not cast me away from your presence. And please do not take your spirit from me. There are people who if they lose their car, they've lost their joy. If they lose their house, in effect, they've lost who they say they are. Because anytime they're telling you about themselves, they tell you about their car, they tell you about their house, they tell you about... Huh? But they do not realize that that's not the greatest asset. David did not say, please do not take my crown from me. You are saying, even if I'm no longer king, it's okay. As long as you do not take. What was he saying indirectly? You are saying, it is the spirit that made me king. It is the spirit that raised me. It is the spirit that took me from the background to the forefront. Please do not take. And when you are begging, you beg. Today we're going to go before God. And kana mwe amtu nevanga watanga kuzomuru wa. Tila uti. Tila kukumiru wa tiba ite say. Are you here someone? Raise your hands. You've not prayed this prayer before. Say father. Say father. Don't leave me. Lord. Don't leave me. Whatever I have done. To cause me. To lose you, I repent totally and fully. I surrender my all unto you. Lord, anything that would cause me to lose the most precious asset I have, the Holy Spirit, I totally repent unto you. I surrender from anything in my life that would cause me to lose you. Any weakness, even anger that would cause you to take your Holy Spirit away, I repent. Help me, Lord. Say mercy, Lord. Listen, there are many times you've been crying out to God for favor. And it was an error, I'll show you. It was an error because you did not do what is required for favor to be released. He says you will arise and have number one mercy on Zion. For the set time to favor her. Yes, the set time has come. When it is time for a breakthrough, don't pray for favor. Pray for mercy. 
Why? Because was there seven one? I think it is. When I would have healed Israel, the iniquity was brought up. So Israel was crying for favor, for healing. When they should have been crying for mercy, for the iniquities and the sins. Repentance ushers in breakthroughs. Psalm 102, 13. Say it's my time. Is there anybody here who you can feel that it's your time? Can anybody feel that things are about to happen for them? That you are on the verge. You can be on the verge of major breakthroughs. But if the mercy equation is not there, again you'll be delayed. If it is not your personal sin that the devil will use, it is the sins of the forefathers. That's why at the set time, say the set time. We're in the set time. Do we agree? So at the set time, you must cry for mercy. We're going to cry for mercy today. Now, 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 mercy, people who cry for mercy are people who are humble. Proud people don't believe they need mercy. Hello? But there are people who when they mess up, you see, it's not so much about you messing up, it's your attitude. Saul was being told you messed up. Listen to how he spoke to the man of God. And the man of God, the Lord is saying this to you today, you can speak on. That's him messing up. Whereas David was saying, please don't take your spirit from me. I'm begging you, don't take your spirit from me. Please, I know I messed up. But please. If you are wrong, beg for mercy. Whether it is to people or God, beg for mercy. Justification actually makes the person you offended even more angry. So when you beg God for mercy, he rubs away everything that you did. That means that if mercy is factored into the equation, there's nothing the devil can do or say to stop your breakthrough. So we are going to cry out for mercy with that revelation. Raise your hands, close your eyes. Say mercy, Lord. Say I cry for mercy, Lord. Have mercy. Have mercy. Those things are still fresh in the realm of the spirit. Ah, it might have been 10 years ago, but in the realm of the spirit, it's fresh. It's like God is still getting offended. Don't ever act like you don't need mercy. People who are broken beg for mercy. Those tears in your eyes are a gift from God. Brokenness is what I long for, says the Lord. He wants people who are broken. God can't fix you until you are broken. Sometimes you are too strong for God to fix. Eh, you need to learn to come before him broken. When you have tried and tried and failed, eventually you are broken. And then you raise your hands to him and say, Father, mercy. Ah, the race is not to the swift. Nor the battle to the strong. No wealth always to men of wisdom. But time and chance happen to them all. And that time and chance, the set time comes when you beg for mercy. If you don't beg for mercy, you will forfeit everything that God promised.
promised you and it won't be his fault. It's only because you would not have used the provision that is there in the constitution of the kingdom and that provision is mercy. 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 You've been crying for deliverance when you should have been crying for mercy. You've been crying for resources when you should have been crying for mercy. You've been crying for promotion when you should have been crying for mercy because if God factors in your past, you don't qualify. Mercy, caption, qualifies you for the unqualified. It qualifies you for what you don't qualify for. Mercy qualifies the disqualified. Mercy, nyasha, nyasha, nyasha. That's why Paul said, I am what I am by the mercy of God. Mercy will make you. I am the Mahaya. Mercy. Dabashi and Mahaya. Mercy. Mercy. Say mercy. Say it. Say mercy. Say mercy, Lord. Say, Father, I beg you for mercy. Ah, your posture in the spirit must be of one begging. You don't ask God for mercy as a right. You beg for it. He's the king. Beg for mercy. Lord, I beg you for mercy. You don't even have to give it to me, but I beg you for mercy. I've blown chance after chance after chance after chance, but I still beg you for mercy. I appeal to you, Lord, for mercy. If you don't have mercy on me, the devil will destroy me. I want to talk to somebody who you're on the verge of destruction. Raise your hands and beg for mercy. Your dreams are even warning you that you're about to die. So you need mercy. If you, that mercy does not come, oh, you might die. Don't, 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 don't die in your pride. I'm desperate for you. I'm desperate for your mercy. <laughs> I'm desperate for you. Show some desperation. I'm desperate for you. I'm desperate for your mercy. Lord, I'm sorry. 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 Listen, you need God more than you need the breakthrough. If that gets into your head, it will change your life. Before you give me the breakthrough, Give me you, everything else can wait. <laughs> Give me you, I hope I'm not too late. 
give me you everything else can wait <laughs> give me you I hope I'm not too late tell him tell him tell him give me you he wants to hear that everything else he can always give me you give me you give me you I'm not too late Eriadamahaya so give me you everything else can wait he can always he can wait my Adamahaya I'm not too late listen he said, I hope I'm not too late. Which means you can keep asking God for things until it's too late to get him. Lord, raise your hands. Lord, minister to the one who is almost too late. Say, Lord, I hope I'm not too late. I have made the decision to look for you more than I've looked for things. You are my priority. You are my everything. You are my source. Today, I beg you, give me you. Give me you. We love and appreciate you. God bless you. Have a great day. See you tomorrow.